everyone and welcome to the Perfume Realm. My name is Mona Hill and today we are going to be doing my top 10 summer fragrances. Now before we get started, I just wanted to say if you are interested in joining the realm, I highly suggest clicking the subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you can stay up to date on everything that is happening here. Now let's jump into it. The first perfume for summer I decided to pick was La Belle. The reason being is it's a beautiful, juicy scent, but it's a little bit transparent. And by transparent, I don't mean cheap. I just mean that it's not dense, it's not thick, and therefore I find it to not be cloying for the summertime. So when you really want something that's going to pop, you know, a fun fragrance, you just don't want something way, way, way too light or without character, I think that this is a good way to go because it has this beautiful, juicy pear, on vetiver with a little bit of vanilla and those are the only three notes in here. I think this perfume is perfect for a summer evening dinner or you know taking a walk in the evening something that you want to be a little bit more special a little bit more high quality not just something way too light i think this is the best way to go the pear in here is so juicy there's vetiver that is very tame as well as vanilla it makes it sweet it makes it feminine and i just think that this is going to be perfect for the summertime okay so the next pick i have over here is terracotta from guerlain the reason that I decided to put this one on the list is I'm pretty sure everyone knows this is an amazing summertime fragrance. Very beachy, very exotic. It has a beautiful jasmine that I am obsessed with. I really think that they did a stunning job with the jasmine in this one. There's also a little bit of coconut. It definitely has kind of this very warm golden type of a scent very very beautiful and i find it to be quite solar and this one is an eau de toilette and that means that it's a little bit lighter and that is totally fine because i think that if this was any stronger it would be way too much since it does have jasmine in this and the white florals can be way too much sometimes like i own safanade and that is a beautiful beautiful white floral very very thick and rich and creamy but i think that i would literally choke if i wore that in the summertime this is a great option if you want to wear that kind of beautiful white floral scent but you don't want it to be too much i think that this is definitely the way to go um, i know that this is a cult classic and guys i really do think that this is worth all of the hype that it gets it's beautiful my next pick is the beautiful Fleur de Fendu from La Lit Olympica. Now, I don't personally reach for this one too much, and it's not because I don't like it, because I do think it's a really beautiful perfume. I'm just someone who really does like sweet, sweet fragrances. Even in the summertime, I really like a nice, sweet fragrance. This one is not sweet in the gourmand type of scent. It doesn't have any kind of sugary sweetness. All of the sweetness is very natural and comes from the kind of nice light yellow florals in the background. To me, this just smells like a prairie with, you know, flowers, kind of like a meadow or prairie, something like that. Very natural, full of sunlight and, you know, very uplifting. So I think that this one is a great summer fragrance, especially for those who don't want to have something too sweet during the summertime. This one, all the sweetness is from the florals, nothing else. And I think that this would be a really great option for people who like those types of fragrances. The next perfume I have is Lanvin's Eclat de Arpeje. I know I'm not saying it right, but I tried, okay? So I will definitely put the name down in the description box. But this is beautiful as a lilac scent. I really, really adore this one. There's something very fairy tale like about it. I own French Lilac and I think French Lilac from Pacifica is truly the holy grail for lilac fragrances. But that one is really, you know, focused on just the lilac. It's very sweet. It's beautiful, but it's really focused on the lilac and is quite sweet. The sweetness in this one is dialed back a little bit, but it's still there. And it also has a little bit of citrus. Although I love French lilac, I feel like this one really fits the bill when it comes to summer fragrances. It's light, again, very uplifting. 
To me, you get a very faint shampoo vibe, but not in a negative way. Because when I see something as being described as shampoo-like, I also, you know, steer clear of it. I don't like soapy and shampoo type fragrances typically, but this one is a little bit of the shampoo in the background, but a lot more in the foreground that makes it, you know, okay. It makes it work. I think the shampoo aspect of it just keeps it really nice and light and fresh. The rest of this is just, you know, the nuances of the floral lilac with the citrus and it's just beautiful. It makes me happy and I'm really, really happy to own this one. Also, the bottle is beautiful. It has these two little, um, rings and I've heard that they're supposed to symbolize either like a couple or um, the bond between a mother and child and there's a little mother and child on the front there's a little gem on the top I just really adore the packaging for this one as well okay the next fragrance I'm going to share I think I'm just going to add as an honorable mention because it has been discontinued but this is the true religion perfume I love this it's just a really beautiful sweet rain type of scent with a little bit of woodiness in it as well. I just find it to be so refreshing. I think it's a special one. I think it's worth it. Um, I mean, depending on the price. When I don't want anything too heavy, I don't want anything overwhelming, but I still want a noticeable type of fragrance lingering, then this is one that I definitely reach for. Okay, the next perfume that I'm going to share is actually a vanilla fragrance. Now, a lot of the times, vanilla fragrances are very thick, they're very sweet, they're very overpowering. It's just kind of how the note is. It's typically, you know, not the most quiet type of note. And when it's added in a fragrance, you know, a lot of gourmands have it. A lot of fragrances have it, but I associate vanilla a lot with gourmands. And to me, typical gourmands are a little bit too much during the summertime. But if you really want to wear vanilla in the summertime, I think the best way to do it is by spraying a little bit of vanille from Solo Notes. So the Solo Note in this perfume is vanilla. That's all it's focused around. It's very affordable and for an affordable vanilla, I think they did amazing. I think this is beautiful. It doesn't give you that synthetic play-doh um, kind of unsettling type of scent that a lot of cheaper vanilla fragrances do at least for me this one i think really does justice to vanilla it really to me is a sweet type of vanilla like the kind um in frosting it's like vanilla frosting and you have to like sweeter vanillas to enjoy this one but again it's not overwhelming whatsoever I actually really love it for layering as well because it's just subtle enough to um, add a little a little bit of fun to a fragrance but on its own I think it's a really good option for uh, vanilla lovers during the summertime so vanille from Solano okay my next fragrance is juicy couture and this is the original one you guys I am going to urge and plead and implore till the end of my days for you guys to go ahead pick this up and give it another try I'm pretty sure most of you have tried this at one point or another and I think a lot of people have kind of written it off kind of forgotten about it and I am here to resurrect the memory of Juicy Couture, the original. To me, it's nothing like the uh, Viva line whatsoever. It's not like that. It's not sugary, it's not gourmand. And although those are really nice fragrances, this one does employ the art of perfumery a little bit better than those. And it's primarily a floral fragrance. To me, it's really not um, a fruity floral or a gourmand whatsoever. It's a floral and it is a white floral and it is not juvenile. I love this one and I feel like this is a great way to wear white florals during the summertime. Another love of mine for a long time now is Versace Eras Pour Femme, the EDT version. I think that this is a very fun, fruity, uplifting, happy, yummy scent. For a fruity scent, I think it smells of high quality. I honestly can't imagine someone like 
really not liking this. It just seems to be something that everyone would love. I think that this is a really fun scent and I adore it. I honestly adore it. Okay, the next fragrance I'm going to share is Aqua Di Gio from Armani. Now, I am not an aquatic fragrance lover. I don't really like fresh or like too citrusy type of a scent. This one though does it right. It's very sweet. It has a green element to it. It has a fruity element to it. It has the aquatic, but it kind of blends with those other elements. And this is actually the one fragrance that I own that I went specifically looking for because I wanted a summer fragrance. I never really look for um, fragrances for a particular season. When I find a fragrance, I buy it. It's not really, you know, uh, done with the season in mind. Once I own it, that's when I kind of choose what season I want to wear. But one time I really, really was looking for a summer fragrance. Stopped by Sephora, smelled this one, and I was like, this is the perfect one. This is what I've been looking for. So Aqua Di Gio for the summertime. The next perfume that I have is Narcisco Rodriguez's Rouge. This is the Cube. I don't know, actually, do I have the right name for this? I think this is called Rouge, I believe. Now, to me, this is one of those powdery cosmetic type of scents. So it's a sweet lipstick um, using iris, using rose. And also, of course, it has that musk that Narcisco Rodriguez is known for. And I think that this is a really nice, sophisticated, delicate scent that would be great for high tea or brunch or maybe going to see a horse race something like that I think that this would be great because it has a little bit of a presence it has a little bit of structure it's not just airy powder uh, so I think that this would be a great option for the summer as well. The last offering I have for you guys is Lacoste, and this one is Sensual. This one is a beautiful, sporty, almost unisex type of a fragrance. It's sweet in a very natural way, but just with this kind of bitter topping over everything, it makes it a little bit more exciting, gives it a little bit more character. Um, to give you an idea of what kind of bitter I'm talking about, it's kind of like the licorice note in La Little Limpica. It gives you, you know, just a slight bitterness, nothing, you know, overwhelming or gross or anything like that. And I think that this is a really nice, you know, jeans and a t-shirt type of a scent or walking the dog, something like that. Okay, you guys, that is going to wrap up my video. Let me know down in the comments if you are going to be wearing any of these fragrances over the summer. And also let me know what you're going to be wearing, like your own choices. So I have new fragrances on my list to buy as well. Not like I need more fragrances on my list. Um, I should probably not be extending my list. I need to stop. I need to slow my roll, but you know how it goes in the perfume realm. And if you did enjoy this video or any of my content, again, I would love it if you considered subscribing. By subscribing, you are supporting me and helping me grow. Also, I would love it if you gave this video a like and share it with a friend. Other than that, have a good one.